today we are having a batch slightly older than you. Uh, uh, who have made it a point to reconnect with the school. And I think that's the most important of all. Every time a prepite leaves this school, my last words to them is keep in touch with the school. Not because the school needs your money, we certainly do, not that we don't, but we certainly do want people who come back and say, this is a place that we were formed for life. And when people do come and just walk around the school, that brings a lot of joy to people like us who are in education today. Because we know that we are thought of. And this morning, I want to specially welcome Mr. Dixon, a very senior master of our school, uh, who grew old by teaching this batch. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> I think he has names for all of them. And uh, he took the trouble to come this morning all the way from Vattala just because uh, this batch is special. And I think every student that he has taught is very special and dear to his heart. And in fact, when he was walking with me up the steps, he told me, I pray for this school every day. And I think that is the greatest blessing that any school uh, can receive from a master, from the staff, which means that they have enjoyed their time in this school. I know uh, sometimes boys are not the easiest to get on with, but at the end of it, when we look back at our time in education, it becomes the most rewarding. Simply because we sit back and watch those whom we have taught taking on different roles in life. And so this, the, they call themselves the last NCG batch. I don't think you don't even know what it means. <laughs> because uh, it was something that went totally wrong in the education system of our country. Uh, at that time. And uh, anyway, they are here to tell their story. They are here to tell their story to themselves. They are here to tell their story to one another. And probably some of the secrets that others didn't know, probably they will share today. And today we have Mr. Prakash Devanayagam, whose mother was a teacher in this school. How many of you have gone through the dining hall? I know you can't pass through, but there is a, a framed flannel painting or work of art hang, hanging on the wall, which says it's a gift from Mrs. Saurdini Tevanagar to the school. And that has been there ever since that it has been placed there. Just to show the dedication of such teachers uh, that molded the lives of uh, such young people who are now in different parts of the world in different walks of life. So, Mr. Prakash Devanagam is here to address you first. Uh, and uh, to share his way of, uh, of what happened to him and how he grew to what he is today. So I invite him now to address the assembly. Good morning. I would like to start off with a word of prayer 
And at the end of the prayer, I would like to take a minute of silence to be able to honor one of our classmates whose son is here, Ramesh Barnes, who was a classmate of ours who passed away uh, last year. So at the end of the prayer, I would like to, would like to take a minute to be able to have a, a time of silence to remember Ramesh Barnes, another classmate and actually a teammate of ours, Adrian Gurusinghe, and also a very awesome cricketer who ended up playing uh, cricket for St. Thomas's and who I idol worshipped, uh, a, a, a wicketkeeper batsman called Guy Alvis. So we're going to pray first and then we're going to spend one minute in silence. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for giving me this opportunity to be able to come back to the school of my youth. I pray that every one of these students will recognize that they are your workmanship created by you to do good works, which you've prepared in advance for them to do. Father, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart will be acceptable to you. Good morning. Dear sir, thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to be able to be here. Staff, Mr. Dixon Arasaratnam, fellow classmates, and young Thomians, it is an awesome privilege and an honor for me to be here this morning. The last time I was on this stage was a year after I graduated prep school as I won the Manikam Tamapile Challenge Cup for the the best batsman at St. Thomas's Prep School. I not only scored the most amount of runs, I ended up not out against Royal and St. Peter's. And those of you who study math know that when you are not out, you don't, you know, if you play 10 innings and if you're not out tw two, tw twice of that, you have to divide by eight, not by 10. So not only did I score the most amount of runs, I also had the most amount of average. And so uh, there was a lot of very good cricketers at Prep School at that time. Uh, but I ended up, uh, you know, winning the Manikam Tambapale Challenge Cup. This morning, I would like to leave three thoughts with you. The first one is, the f or the three thoughts, or the three lessons that I actually learned while I was at prep school. The first one is in the motto of our school, the Lord is my shepherd. These five words, the Lord is my shepherd, actually comes from Psalms 23. And it's an interesting thing because the Lord is my shepherd, not only when I was five or six years old, when I came into grade one, the Lord is my shepherd in grade nine or grade 10, when I actually graduated from prep school and went, went to Mount, and on and on and on. I am 54 years old right now, and that same is true that the Lord is my shepherd. And I'm hoping that if I get to live as old as Mr. Dixon Arasaratnam, that the Lord will still be my shepherd. So the beautiful thing about the Lord being your shepherd is that it, does, it transcends age. Number two, it transcends circumstances. Not only is the Lord your shepherd when you're winning in life, but the Lord is also your shepherd when, when you failed and when you made mistakes. Because life is not only about you know, the things that we do correctly, but sometimes we make mistakes. And so the Lord is my shepherd, even in our circumstances. And we live in a, in a, in a world of technology today, right? We have the internet. I, I still remember one of my best friends when I was at prep school, Godwin Simon Rasia is here. I used to talk to him every day by dialing the phone. Five, eight, three, you know, and that way. Today we have to press a button. Technology has changed, right? We have Twitter, we have LinkedIn, we have Wi-Fi, right? We have the internet. There are certain places that the internet is very weak compared to other places. We are going down south. And, uh, tomorrow to Bentota, I'm sure that the internet is not going to be as strong in Bentota as it is in Colombo. And the truth of the matter is, in spite of technology, in spite of whether you get good reception or not, the Lord is my shepherd. So that is the first thing that I learned. 
The second thing that I learned was how to be a team player. I learned that while I was in school, when I was playing cricket, when I was doing athletics, and when I was playing soccer. I remember when I was playing soccer, the thing that I liked to do most was to score goals. But that's not where the team needed me. There were people who were better than me at scoring goals, and so I ended up playing fullback. And so I realized that while I was here, that it was not what necessarily I like to do, but it's what the team like to do. One of my class, one of my classmates, Tajkumar Nadraja, is here. One of the things that Nada and I did when we were at Mount is we won the Tarbert Trophy at Mount. It's a very prestigious cup where you're running against extremely formidable Royal and Anandian teams, Trinity and teams. And the main reason that St. Thomas has won the Tarbert was because we won the relays. Nada ran the first lap in the 4 into 100. I ran the second lap in the 4 into 100. In the, in, he was running under 17, I was run, running under 16. Let, let, let Adrian Gurusinghe ran the second lap. And the amazing thing is that it was, it was not because we won the individual stuff. It was because we did very well in the relays. And my mother, she was known as Sarojini Sanders, was an extremely good athlete. She was one of our athletic teachers. And she used to drill into us how to change the baton. Over the years, I've watched some very good teams in America. I, I live in America today. I see some of the best track runners run in America. But one of the things that the Americans don't do very well is change the baton. And many times, even though they might have four very good individual runners, they don't do as well in the four into 100 because they haven't got the concept down of how to be able to change the baton. And if you think about it, in being able to change the baton, you have to be able to not only trust yourself, but to trust the person next to you. And that is a, a good picture of what being playing in a team is like. So I learned that the Lord is my shepherd. I learned to be a team player. And third, but not last, or third, but not last, I learned about uh, winning and losing. While I was at St. Thomas's Prep, I learned about, there was a phrase that says, when the greatest scorer comes to write against your name, he doesn't write whether you won or lost, but how you played the game. That saying was written by a guy by the name of Hartland Grace. Think about that name, Hartland Grace. I thought that he was an Englishman, and the game that he was talking about was cricket. Not until about 10 years ago, when I was at the uh, Cooperstown Hall of Fame, did I find out that Hartland Grace was actually an American journalist, and he was actually writing about baseball. But what is true about baseball is true about cricket, and it's true about life. That there is winning and losing, and how I learned to win and to lose was right here at St. Thomas's Prep, sitting in the assembly hall, being in the classrooms, playing, playing cricket out there, having lunches, being in the choir room. And uh, so I just wanted to leave that with you. As I close, I would like to address the headmaster. It's very interesting that um, you have started on a project to be able to rebuild and re revitalize the school of our youth. The word of encouragement that I would leave with you is that when God wanted a wall built, he didn't actually choose a builder to build the wall for the people of Israel. If you look at Nehemiah's life, God called Nehemiah to build the wall. Nehemiah was not a builder. He didn't have any qualification in how to build a wall. Neither did he have any past performance on how to build a wall. But yet, when God wanted a wall built for his people, he chose Nehemiah. And as I take a look at Nehemiah's life, it's very interesting to me that Nehemiah was a man who was a man of influence and a man who had favor. And then he used that influence and favor to be able to, to get the thing done that God called him to do. So you, he used his relationship capital to do what God called. Secondly, he was a man of wisdom. He understood timing and he understood people. And it was very interesting that he 
knew what the right time was, and he knew, he knew how to recruit the right people. And then last but not least, he was somebody he, who knew how to organize, he knew how to administrate, and he, need, he knew how to prioritize. God called him to build a wall, but there was a lot of opposition during that time, and there was the enemy was trying to attack. Nehemiah perceived that and made sure that not only did he organize teams to be able to build that wall, but while they were building, they were also defending their positions because he realized that the enemy didn't want the wall built. And I'm sure as you take on this challenge of being able to revitalize and refurbish and put excellence back into the classrooms and the facilities here, I'm sure there will be opposition along the way. But I wanted to encourage you that God doesn't call the qualified. He actually qualifies those who are called. So with that, I want to thank you one more time for giving me this opportunity to be able to be here. And um, it is probably the, one of the biggest honors that I've had. And I just want to thank my classmates who are here uh, because it took all of us to be able to pull this thing together. I was just the one who was chosen to represent them today. God bless you. On behalf of the last NCG batch, we have a small gift in the memory of my mom, Sar Mrs. Sarojini Tevanayagam. My classmates from all over the world participated in this, and so we just wanted to take this opportunity to, to give this monetary gift in the memory of my mother. I don't, I don't think it was a coincidence that I talked about the Lord is my shepherd. I did not realize when I did that about 35 years ago that my mother had actually provided this tapestry to St. Thomas's Prep School to remind them of the fact that the Lord is my shepherd. And even though she has moved on, this gift continues to keep on giving and not only reminds the Prep School uh, students of my mother, but also the fact that the Lord is truly our shepherd. I just want to say thank you to, to the headmaster of St. Thomas's Prep School, Reverend Dushi Rodrigo, for giving me this opportunity to come back to the school of my youth and address the boys at the school. It was an incredible opportunity and I had an exciting time being able to do that. I was able to remind the young men at St. Thomas's Prep School that the Lord is indeed my shepherd. And not only is he our shepherd when we are young, but he's, he's our shepherd as we continue our life journey. God bless you.